So here we are, the iPhone 6s is finally out and everyone wants to know how fast it is and is it faster than the competition or is it faster than your old phone? Well I've benchmarked it using Geekbench, GFX Bench, 3D Mark and finally the results are out. Here's a quick sneak preview of Geekbench 3 single core. Look at how fast that iPhone 6s is compared to some recent high-end competition HTC One M9 half the speed Galaxy S6 half the speed so we can see here on single core tests how the iPhones have progressed over time iPhone 5, 5S, 6 and now the 6S and for reference the original HTC One the HTC One M9 the very latest one and we can see the progression of the Galaxy S4, S5 and the latest S6 single core performance which is your uh, typical typical performance doing web browsing, switching from an app to another, things you do every day, you want to be fast. You can see how much faster the iPhone 6S is than any nearest competition. For multitasking, so much more intensive, uh, probably mathematical applications and some game applications. Uh, this really depends on how well the software is written to make use of those multi-cores. Uh, you would expect uh, something like the um, HTC One M9 and the Galaxy S6 to be faster, um, having supposedly eight cores, although it's a little bit deceptive because uh, there's four faster cores and four slower cores, I believe, and it switches between the two banks, so not quite eight, rather than uh, rather more like four. But um, the iPhone 6S only having two cores, amazingly fast compared to the four to eight cores of the S6, nearly the same speed. And an even more impressive result for the 3D Mark. For the iPhone 6S being faster than any of the recent competition, in particular the HTC One M9 and the Galaxy S6, as well as a significant jump up from the iPhone 6. Typically the jump from um, the first phone up to the S version tends to be uh, quite a big jump. Uh, more so than the generational jump as you can see going from the 5 to the 5s was a big jump going from the 5s to the 6 not so much but going from the 6 to the 6x 6s is quite a big jump in performance so um, makes for a very good reason for upgrading uh, I just upgraded from the 5 which served me uh, very nicely I'm still a good phone uh, up to the 6s so as you can see it's a huge jump in performance for those so for those people that haven't upgraded in a while, it's a pretty good reason to upgrade. These are the tests I run on all of the devices, or obtain results from for all of the devices. Geekbench 3 Single Core, Multicore, 3D Mark, GFX Bench, Manhattan, T-Rex both on and off screen, and more importantly the GFX Bench Long Term Performance Test, which shows how consistent the performance is. And bit of an off the wall one but the Antutu test which is mainly for Android phones and therefore probably optimised for them rather than optimised for iPhones which use the better and faster Metal API I have also included that test for interest. Interesting test that we can see running here is the GFX Bench long term performance test. This is testing the frame rate stability over a run of 30 runs of the T-Rex graphics test and it's checking for the lowest frame rate that's recorded across all of those 30 runs and of course what you want is smooth performance that's consistent all of the time you're playing a game uh, so this is quite a good uh, test for real life game playing and um, historically the iPhones have been a lot better at this particular test than a lot of the competition so let's see how it compares in this test. And it tests for consistency in the frame rate and records the minimum frame rate over all of those 30 tests. Uh, this is to make sure your game uh, runs smoothly, doesn't stutter, doesn't slow down, and the, uh, to make sure that the CPU or graphics uh, cores don't get throttled back due to the chipset overheating. And you can see what a huge difference there is in the different phones. Uh, the iPhone recent iPhones have been uh, quite good in this respect having the power VR chipset which doesn't throttle back uh, um, well, hardly at all not so much as uh, certainly the competition um, on my individual phone the iPhone 6S, 6S was uh, actually slightly slower than the 6 um, so maybe a little bit of throttling back is going on 
uh, but still a fantastic result at over 40 frames per second compared to the Galaxy S6 which you can check this result by going onto the GFX Bench website many many users have tested their phones and it comes up with another 15 frames per second which weirdly seems to have got worse over the generations so if you're playing a game you don't really want the frame rate to slow down to 15 frames per second because that is quite noticeably jerky um, whereas anything over 25 or 30 is going to be nice and smooth the GFX Bench long-term performance test is one of the more critical ones that I like and is, as somebody said recently if you're looking at a better indication of real world workloads for current generation graphics hardware long-term performance is probably the best bet and no benchmark should exclude this important feature and here's the test result called uh, battery test performance which is basically a long-term performance test and you can see here it's 2234 frames uh, which is the f number of frames rendered by the slowest test run and it corresponds to about 40 frames per second so the next really good test to run which really exercises your graphical and CPU abilities is the uh, well both the Manhattan and the T-Rex graphical tests the Manhattan is as you can see here is a scene night scene from Manhattan with a lot of animated graphical effects like you get in a typical game perhaps a high-end game and it does uh, really stretch the graphical engine of your device and the off-screen result as you can see here uh, for the iPhone 6s is about twice what its nearest competition is achieving and the T-Rex result is uh, pretty similar as well and just a reminder this is what the uh, T-Rex graphical test is uh, looking like so um, the difference between the on-screen and off-screen the on-screen test runs the test at the native resolution of the phone so for higher resolution devices like the S6 and so on they're going to have a bit of a hard time at it and therefore will be slower as you can see in these graphs where the S6 is uh, as you can see probably about a third maybe less the speed of the iPhone 6s and for the T-Rex test is uh, well let's just say significantly slower whereas the off-screen test tests all of the devices at the same 1080p resolution 1080 lines so there's a more direct comparison of the speed of the devices all running at the same resolution and as you can see there is a big speed difference with again the iPhone 6s coming out significantly faster by about a factor of two than its nearest competition an impressive result and for the sake of completeness, for those people using Android phones that like to use the Antutu test, which is really a test that's uh, set up for comparing Android phones, so it doesn't include the fast uh, Metal API for instance, but uh, it's amazing how the iPhone 6s actually competes near enough the same score as the Galaxy S6. Uh, it was a little bit weird on some of the results, um, because I had two high scores and two lower scores, um, when rerunning the tests, these are the two high scores at uh, about 67,000. I think I had uh, two low scores at about 59,000. Um, not quite sure why that was, but interesting uh, to see the comparison nonetheless. So people are either going to be very pleased or rather upset, depending on which phone they own. Uh, so don't go giving me loads of emails and comments disputing this, disputing that. By all means, add a few uh, civil comments if you like. Um, but I try to be as factual as possible just by looking at the numbers and doing the tests which you can of course do yourself uh, and here are those numbers again which uh, you can look at just pause the screen to look into those numbers in more detail at the end of the day these are all pretty fast phones and are certainly good enough for uh, doing most of the jobs that you throw at them and not many of us play really high-end games so any of these phones you'll be more than happy with all good cameras, all fast enough, and uh, so it's somewhat academic interest, but of interest nonetheless. So there's the data, have a look at it for yourself, rummage over it, and thanks for watching, bye. Oh, and one more final thing before we go, here's some of the screenshots of the tests, which is evidence of the results, if you don't believe me. Okay, cheers.
These are all for the new and latest iPhone 6S. And I've also showed the uh, Antutu results, both the two sets of high ones and the two sets of slightly lower scores, just for completeness.